bottom lane to provide damage later in the game, to provide this large crowd control to the team fight later in the game. Their early focus will continue to be the solo laners. Acadian gonna help out Broken Blade and Bjergsen. So the second round of this draft phase with these double bands is gonna be incredibly important. TSM now on red side have the guaranteed counter pick for one of those two solo lanes. What are Cloud9 going to target? I like the ban coming out here from TSM on the Morgana as well. When you look at something like Galio, when he has to channel the taunt, you can very much see it coming. Hey, bro, I'm gonna taunt you. You better back away. Here comes the taunt. Better watch out. The taunt's coming. Very easy to black shield that and walk away from it. We've also seen Niski already play at this series, so taking that one out makes a lot of sense. And Cloud9 says no Kale either. And it also opens up for something more like a potential last pick LeBlanc. We did see last time around on the red side, TSM did give their final counter pick over to Broken Blade. They did blind pick that Akali, and it was kind of somewhat answered by the Zillion. So LeBlanc also going to be banned out by TSM, so never yeah, mind. But Not happening this time. It is very interesting to see the adaptation that Sven made with his build. You know, you talk about double tier being removed, and Seraphs kind of gave a lot of extra survivability with that big shield. He kind of replaced that with a Bloodthirster shield with three sources of lifesteal. That was a tremendous amount of survivability that he was able to utilize very, very well in the last game here, too. Final ban of this champion select will be the Jace. Not going to allow Broken Blade to have that control over top side. And although the end of the game story last time for TSM was about Bjergsen and it was about Sven, the early game was all about Broken Blade. With Acadian's help taking control over the top side of the map, moving into the enemy jungle, making those plays. Between a Zoe and an Ezreal is extreme. And especially when you have a champion like a Galio that is super good at counter-engaging. Sit on top of those carries. If somebody comes in, you taunt them. If you're too far away, heroic entrance. Boom, you're in the fight. The TSM composition is all about that poke right now, but Cloud9 has some warriors on this team. When you look at the Lucian, when you look at the Rise, the damage potential of these champions, as long as they can close that gap, is there. Oh, oh they do oh, it! Oh, the assassin is to Zoe, looking for the assassin play here. Niski throws down the gauntlet. Oh my I god. I was ignoring this. I thought this was going to be another bait and switch, and everybody would get excited for nothing. But anybody that was spamming Zed or Bed, you better get up out of the sheets, because it's Zed time. Oh my god, so exciting to see the Zed. And this means it's the blind pick rise for Licorice in the top lane here, and will be answered by the Cho'Gath. This is, I mean, they don't have a lot of tank killers, but oh my god, it, it feels like it's all about the mid lane. Look at this, putting so much faith in Niski, going against Bjergsen, mm -hmm. TSM star player here putting him on the Zed, the Assassin into Zoe matchup here, looking for those kills. TSM have been flirting with the Zed pick, every champion select, hovering it here, so but Cloud9, <laughs> take it up. TSM going up against the Zed here, Cloud9 putting faith in this one to win the game that could send them to St. Louis if they find the victory. If they don't, TSM- Especially if you have early jungle support here, taking away some of Zoe's summoner spells. She doesn't have built-in mobility for herself to help get away. It's just the early speed boost from, you know, Spell Thieves activations. Other than that, Zed has the threat of going for those all-ins to look for the kills, also starting to roam around the map. Let's see if they can make it pay off. Oh, baby, the crowd is ready. We're all excited and ready to go here as we go into game four. Somebody with a sign that says, make paddle star point and click. Get that guy out of here. How did he get in the building? <laughs> we'll see if the Zoe can manage to land those skill shots onto the Zed, though. Very elusive. Remember, the most recent buffs to Z Has the possibility of going all in, so he's called his jungler here. Bjergsen has the barrier back and active. Here comes Sven Scaron, he's able to find the knock up and there goes your death bar. Bjergsen's gonna be taken low, the barrier comes out. Ignite continues to tick and the proc will oh! be there. Niski nearly gets him on the fadeaway shuriken throw. Here Broken, but Blade. Broken Blade making his way over. Oh! A nice buffer, Sven Scaron stays alive but only for a moment and TSM find first blood. TSM called Broken Blade down the river. He makes it in time and they find the first blood. That was so well played by Bjergsen too. He waited until the death mark completed to flash away gaining himself that critical distance and allowing himself to survive with almost no help. Yeah, that almost stepped back up towards the shadow and got a shuriken <laughs> in the face. Didn't finish him off. Licorice with some damage here onto Acadian, who has no flash. be punished. Licorice just flashing forward, grabbing himself a solo kill, punishing a greedy Acadian.
Broken Blade has to go all the way down the river to find his kill, flash over and uh, finish it up. <laughs> Licorice just kind of walks into his own jungle, finds the enemy jungler and gets it up. Here's the all-in on Bjergsen, though. Svenskaren did flash forward to try and get some extra damage. The barrier comes through for there, and there it is. Walks definitely a possible area for Cloud9 to try and exploit. So far, Bjergsen has played this so well on the Zoe like you're talking about. There's a bit of a chunk. And I just think, especially now, when you look at the itemization from Bjergsen, Going mid lane isn't going to work. He has a Seekers and a Stopwatch available, and I, I don't think that's someone you can actually all in. His key versus Akkadian, 1v1, not gonna be 1v1 for long, and Akkadian takes him out, assassinating the assassin. There you go, Akkadian finds the kill for TSM, and they actually start the dragon up. Here comes Cloud9's bottom. Cloud9 trying to stop this one, make up for the fact that their mid laner is down. Zazel eating some poke. Yerkson not gonna find the paddle star on that one. Sleepy Trouble Bubble also gonna miss the mark. Akadian still here in the pit, looking to lock this one down. Since Scaring goes in, but it's gonna be secured by the side of TSM. Akadian now able to find even more damage. Zazel looking to get himself away, but TSM has already won the objective and the fight. Here comes your Rek'Sai ulti. That's a double kill over to Akadian. Akadian back on Rek'Sai. Akadian with three kills and a dragon now for TSM. The tides have turned. Yeah, it's Akkadian taking over this early game, looking so, so strong. Has been in the right place at the right time, and C9's early game plan was all about getting Niski ahead. It has not worked whatsoever. Akkadian get knocked up. Uh, the ultimate can buy a lot of time, too. Licorice, though, is their next target. Teleport's coming through. Akkadian already has positioning on the tri-bush, and he can tunnel over that wall. If Akkadian gets this knockup, remember, that's what we were talking about earlier. It easily facilitates Cho'Gath landing everything. Akkadian manages to flash for the knockup. The Realm Warp will not find the mark. And Broken Blade is hungry. Ooh. But lunch is denied because Akkadian's on a rampage. You can't flash those. Akkadian finds another mark, and they get the kill. Now bottom side, the 2v2 starting up. Sneaky and Zazel trying to make moves here yet again. The calling gonna win them the trade, but considering they're not getting any kills and they're still dropping bodies on the top half, it's TSM that continued it just five seconds after plating falls, so they miss out on 320 gold with that one, but they will take down this turret. Yep, first turret bonus going to be added in the pockets of TSM here. Opening up the map as well. They will sacrifice bottom side. Aaron goes in, tries to initiate something here. Smoothie getting himself away for now. Tries to use the heroic entrance as an exit. Instead, going to be burned down. And Sneaky's piercing light will find his heart. Z9 overload on their strong side of the map. They force the kill there. They're able to pick it up. And they should be able to answer turrets. Yeah, I think that was an important one for them. They needed to get something with that much of a commitment to the bottom side. Sven Scarin had been spending so much time. And they are going to be able to get that turret back likely on this wave. But certainly, she has- Still have Licorice down here, so Dragon is available and attracting quite a lot of attention. Yes, sir. And remember, when you have Cho'Gath on your team, you automatically have a 1,000 damage smite. These fights are not nearly as even as they otherwise would be. And Broken Blade and TSM are deciding to start up the Mountain Drake. If you use it on the Dragon, you don't have it for the fight. But they won't need it if they're able to find the initiation like that. Spin Scarin is already down. Smoothie going to be in some trouble now. Burst it out to Winter's Bite, making sure of it. Disky going in, looking to find the kill in the Broken Blade. Sneaky's able to secure that one. And Cloud9 have now pulled ahead in the fight. Sneaky dashing forward, looking to grab the damage on that enemy mid laner. Bjergsen firing back. Arcadian moves in even further. Realm Warp will save Cloud9, but TSM will take the fight. Huge fight there for TSM. Looked like it was going to be going Cloud9's way, but Bjergs and Sven and Acadian stand strong there. They're going to take the fight and the Dragon. And second time this game, people trying to flash out of that Rek'Sai ultimate. That is a no-no. Black Cleaver, as you said, is they are very strong at this point in time. You look at that enemy Cho'Gath. He's got a lot of health. Beast, the Fistle Mask. He's got the Bracer and in Inventory. The only armor is a Glacial Shroud, which gives 20, barely more than cloth armor. So still pretty vulnerable. Sneaky's able to find some firing time. Licorice looking to get away with the Realm Warp, but the Silence says no. Akkadian says no. And Broken Blade says, I'm hungry, man. Takes a big old bite out of him. Flash follow. They get the knock up into the rupture, and that is another kill for TSM. They take down one of the split pushers, and your pressure immediately collapses. During that time, Cloud9 did get the turret on top side, though, so they did get some gold. But you can see how easy that collapse is to pull off. Licorice, your ultimate is just sit here and take all those shots from the enemy team. Yeah, and with the Rice's Glory speed up and slow, it actually makes it very easy to land those skill shots when you do land the slow on your rise. And just to give you guys a little bit of an update about the audio issue that is going on that is being fixed up right now. 
The players have been given permission to, to chat during this pause, I do believe, and it is going to be about two minutes until that is fixed, and then we will be right back into game. What an exciting one. Will they continue to focus on this side laner? Uh, you keep mentioning the righteous glory here and the ease of activation, just making it the tower dive even, mm -hmm. looking so effortless there for the TSM duo of Acadian and Broken Blade, finding that kill onto Licorice it again. Yeah, and we're going to have to see if C9 can really pause is resumed. The Drake is going to arrive on Summoner's mm -hmm. Rift as well. And that's another tool with two neutral objectives to pull you across uh, for them to try and exploit. And we'll see if they're going to be able to actually do it. But has been such a, a battle back for TSM, going down in two very decisive games, two Cloud9, game one, game two, even in game three, despite some early advantages, it felt like Cloud9 had stabilized. It felt like they could have closed out that series, but here we are, TSM having turned around game three in control of game four, and it, the momentum is changing. It feels like they are, as you said, kind of on the verge of perhaps pushing us to a fifth game. Both of these teams fighting so, so much over the- Put it up by Cloud9. The one ward in that pit from TSM is already disabled by a control ward. Zazel will sweep out the back side of the pit. A blue ward placed down slightly outside will reveal that Cloud9 is up to something. Finscaren's down to about one third HP. This could be very dire if it goes badly for them. Niski's gonna be in some trouble. Taken very low, taken down. Bjergsen grabs that kill and TSM will now look to make even more happen. Baron is still going to be aggro. This is a leash. TSM has now taken over the pit. They've taken over the Drake. It is secured by Broken Blade. And TSM has some hella momentum now. Three dead on Cloud9. Wow, what a banger. We come out of the pause and the Baron is down. Now TSM are marching at the gates. That is one way to come back into the game after a pause. Hey, I mean, you've got to respect it. They know they're very far behind. That is a play that could get you back into the game, but TSM, scan it, continue using this buff. Trap Cloud9 and the rest of their base for the entirety of this game with the pressure the Baron gives you. Mid lane, the tier two will fall. Acadian's not with the rest of the squad, but TSM is not concerned. Righteous glory coming out from Broken Blade. Stasis will buy him some time. Glacial Fissure not gonna find a mark, but Finscaren will. Broken Blade in some trouble. Gonna be taken very low, but not quite taken down. Misky going in the middle of everyone, but he's gonna be killed immediately. Fred goes on a killing spree. They lose their top laner, but TSM will win the fight. Now they're on to the end him. Now they're, they're pushing for the end. further in. They're going for the end of this game. Nexus turret number one under fire, taken down to half HP. Acadian going behind enemy lines, looking to grab the kill onto Sneaky. Taunt's gonna be used, but not even needed. The health bars evaporate. Cloud9 evaporates, and TSM in 25 quick minutes will take us to game number five. C9 dominated game number one and game number two, but it's TSM with the fastest game of the series in game number four, and it is TSM with all the momentum as we go into Silver Scrapes. This is what TSM fans wanted to see. This is what League of Legends fans wanted to see in terms of getting all five games from these two squads that have such a reputation and such a history in the LCS. C9 need to remember how they won games one and two, both under 28 minutes, complete domination. We're heading to the decisive game number five. Everyone predicting in this match, leading up to this, these two powerhouses were completely split. There was 50-50 fan votes coming into yeah. this series, and rightfully so, it's gonna come down to that last game. Uh, and it, you have to feel like it's so much been this battle of the junglers, right? You know, Sven Skarin, so incredible in those early games. Now Akkadian on the Rek'Sai, side, eight, one, and six. He was monstrously strong. Sven Skarin was not able to make anything happen with all that early pressure he was putting on around mid. And when Niski and him couldn't get anything done there, it felt like the game was falling into TSM.